I know what's good for me. It's just so boring. I read articles all the time about the health benefits of water. Better blood circulation, more energy, good for your skin. The list goes on. Water is no doubt good for you. But a couple things about water. If I drink the recommended 64 ounces a day, which is eight eight ounce glasses, I literally am pissing all day long. Oh, and if I drink a glass or two right before I go to bed, I'm up all night long as well, which is really annoying when I don't sleep that much as it is. So one, it makes me piss. And two, like I said, it's just really fucking boring. I've tried putting the lemon wedges in it, still water. I've tried adding like those crystal light powders to it. And that does help a little bit, but honestly, I can't imagine that eight glasses of crystal light in a day is all that good for you. Plus, it kind of makes me about half sick to my stomach if I drink too much of it. So water is a struggle for me, just to get it down. But one of the things that I've found that helps is a water bottle. But not just any water bottle. I'm talking like a cool water bottle. If I get a cool water bottle, then the likelihood of me drinking water goes up exponentially. That sounds stupid, I know. Because it's still the same water. But it does make a difference. So a few weeks ago, once again, I'm out on uh, Amazon and I'm putting shit on my wish list, right? And one of the things that I find is this water bottle that looks like a flask small clear plastic and has interchangeable lids one black one one white one comes in this cool little box i'm sold this water bottle was 28 bucks so i put it out there but then a couple of days later i'm like that's just too expensive and i take it off i look for another cheaper one and i find one for like eight bucks and i just order I'm talking with my mom later that day, and she's like, well, you might be getting something in the mail soon. And I'm like, oh yeah? And she's like, did you have a uh, water bottle out there? And I'm like, well, I did, but I took it off. And she was like, well, I already had it in my cart, and I just ordered it. Did you not want it? And I'm like, no. No, that's actually the one I wanted, but I just thought it was too expensive, so I took it off, ordered the cheaper one. And she was like, well, we're not going to worry about that. Now you'll get the one that you want. I'm not much of a car guy, but I do know what I like. And back when I was first starting a family, what I liked were Mustang GT convertible. Had a couple friends. One had an LX, didn't care for that one. The other one had a GT, but it wasn't a convertible. Close, but I love those rag tops. The color to me didn't really matter that much, as long as the rag top was black. I just always thought those looked cooler than, say, the white ones. So for a long time, I dreamed of having one of these cars. I liked them ever since high school and always thought, one day, one day I'll have one of those babies. But then, as it often does, life sort of intervened. Got married, had a couple kids, bought a minivan, and soon my Mustang dreams faded. But a few years into our marriage, our minivan started going to shit. And we soon realized we were going to have to replace it. So we did a thing that you do at the time, and we went around to various dealerships in town on a Sunday afternoon looking for a car, hoping to just not be bothered by any of these salesmen. And we get to this one dealership, and we're looking through their used selection, and all of a sudden, the heavens parted. And this celestial vehicle descended from the clouds. It was a 1986 
Ford Mustang GT convertible. Black on red and beautiful as a glass of bourbon. I get out, look this thing over, a few scratches here and there, but otherwise it was mint. Low miles, ground effects, nice rims, had everything that I wanted. Plus it was older, it was an 86, which meant it was gonna be cheaper than say, you know, a newer one, like a 91 or a 92. So I looked at the price tag and they want seven grand for it. Where do I sign? Well, like I said, it was Sunday, so there was no one there, which meant we were gonna to have to come back. So my wife and I, we leave and go check out a couple other dealerships. We find nothing like that GT. We do, however, find a minivan that we like. And so that evening, my wife and I are discussing what to do, right? Obviously, the practical thing would be to just get the minivan. We've got a family of four at the time, and trying to get two car seats in a Mustang is just not going to be fun. I really wanted this Mustang, and so I kept pushing for it. And so we're going back and forth, and one of the things that my wife brings up is that when you look this car up in Kelly Blue Book or whatever it was at the time, this car only booked for $4,900. So even though they were selling it for $7,000, technically it's only worth $4,900. And man, did she think she had me. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, why would you pay $2,000 more for a vehicle than it's worth? But my response was brilliant. Because what I said in not so many words was, I don't fucking care how much it's worth. It's worth $7,000 to me. I don't give a shit what that book says. I wanted that fucking car. It was worth it to me. Now, I'm not really a pack rat, certainly not a hoarder, but I don't really like to get rid of stuff. And when I say stuff, I mean my stuff. Since my wife and I have been married, we've moved a total of, I think, about five times. And each time we've accumulated more stuff. Now, sometimes that was because our family had grown. Other times it was because our house got bigger. And you know how that goes. We just had to fill it up. Other times it was just life. And we just have a tendency to accumulate things over the years. We have a lot of stuff. We have some new stuff. We have some stuff that we've had for years. And we have some old stuff, like really old stuff, like stuff from when we were kids. Shit that's like 30, maybe 40 years old. In fact, there are several boxes sitting out here in this garage right now that are labeled Dad's Old Stuff. Now, what sort of little treasures do these boxes have in them? Thank you for asking. Well, one box has a clock in it. And it's a clock that I got from my grandma, who got it at a garage sale. And this clock has a bowler on it, because I used to be into bowling. Now, I don't know if this clock works anymore, and I haven't bowled for years, but I still like this clock. Another box has this piggy bank in it, only it's not really a piggy. It's this ugly looking fucking animal we called Ichabod. And this piggy bank is empty, except for two or three half dollars that are stuck in Ichabod's foot that I could never get out. Again, haven't used this thing for years, decades, but I like it. Oh, and this one box has cologne, a little cloth bag filled with all different types of cologne. Cologne that my dad used to wear, cologne that my grandpa used to wear. The cologne that I used to wear when I was a little kid. Old, half-used, probably no good anymore bottles of cologne. In a bag that doesn't even fit them all. It sticks out the top, hanging out the sides and shit. 
But I wouldn't part with that bag of cologne for a thousand dollars. A bowling clock. A fucked up looking piggy bank. And a bag full of bottles. All completely worthless to everyone else. Except me. It's a passage in the book of Ephesians where Paul says this. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. We are God's masterpiece. I don't know about you, but most of the time I don't feel like God's masterpiece. Like many of you, I'm sure, I look in the mirror on a daily basis and the critiquing begins. It usually starts with the physical stuff. You should put on some weight here. Maybe lose a little bit there. You should probably dress a little bit nicer. Smile a little bit wider. Maybe just try a little bit harder when it comes to your appearance. Or maybe for you, it's relational. You should try and be a better husband. Buy more flowers. Be more romantic. Be more spontaneous. Be that man that you were when you first met her. Or you should be a better wife. Love him more. Make him feel special. Make him feel like you only have eyes for him. Or be better parents. Compliment your kids more. Encourage them. Support them. Be a role model for them so that they will be for their kids. Or maybe it's spiritual. Maybe when you look in the mirror, you think to yourself, God, I have fallen so short. I know I need to read more, pray more, just do more. God, I know you've got to be disappointed in me. Because every day, I always seem to find a way to fuck things up. God, I don't feel like a masterpiece. We do this, or at least I do. I stand in front of the mirror and all I see are flaws. Now sometimes that's okay. Sometimes when you see flaws, that's just the motivation you need to do something about it. Sometimes those extra pounds will encourage you to get healthier, finally start to take care of yourself. Sometimes recognizing those deficiencies in your relationships is the first step to actually doing something to fix them. And sometimes you may need to drift away from God in order to appreciate who He is and what He's done for you. But sometimes it's not healthy. Sometimes we take it too far. Sometimes we go from constructive criticism to full-on just ripping ourselves apart. And I don't think that's what God had in mind for us at all. He calls us his masterpiece, his masterwork, his master stroke. God considers us the pinnacle of his creation. And it's not just the pretty people, and it's not just the athletes, and it's not just the geniuses. We are all God's masterpiece. And it's simply because he says so. He's the one who assigns our value, not us, thank God. He determines our worth. In the world's eyes, or even in our own eyes, we may be a car that's only worth a few thousand dollars, but God would pay much more. Or maybe we're like the water bottle, and we think, nobody would ever pay this much for me. But God would. Or maybe we're more like that bowling clock, or that bag of cologne, or that fucked up piggy bank, and we think, I'm not worth anything to anybody anymore. But to God, friend, you are worth it. You are valued. You are his most prized possession. You are his masterpiece. Glasses up. To good friends, great nights, stiff drinks, and real conversations. I'll see you next time.